Copy God's Word, turn if you will to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. I'm excited about tonight's message. I, it wasn't what I planned on preaching. The Lord kind of changed my heart about it uh, this afternoon. And I think it's a perfect message. Perfect message for us tonight. But this is David's, one of his first uh, messages that he preached. So one of David's first messages he preached. He's preaching to the Jewish crowd and preaching to his people. And it's a pretty important message. It's kind of interesting that... Uh, my very first message that I preached, I think, was back in 95, 94, somewhere around there. And I, I didn't have a title. I didn't have really any kind of points other than I wanted to make the point about Jesus and God and salvation. And I preached across as best as I could. And I had more amens and smiles. And it was probably the worst message I ever preached in my life because I was scared to death. And, but the church I was preaching in that, Arrington Branch Baptist Church, they just loved the Lord and, and loved that I was willing vessel and trying at my all. And uh, it was just very, very interesting. I thought, man, my first message was, you know, I preached Jesus, so I can't second guess. We shouldn't second guess any more than we second guess when we witness. You never go wrong telling somebody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I never try to second guess what God puts on my heart. And here, David, I can honestly say his message is better than mine. His first. So uh, if you have a copy of God's Word and you're there, please stand honor God's Word. And I'm going to read starting with verse 23. And the Bible says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Show forth from day to day His salvation. Declare His glory among the heathen, His marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in His presence. Strength and gladness are in His place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Y'all may be seated. Now there's a theme, when I was reading through this this afternoon, I noticed a theme that David uh, is preaching. And I thought to myself, if I was, I, I squared and I circled and I kind of counted what he's preaching about. And from the get-go, even when you go back into chapter 16, even in verse 7, where he says, give thanks unto the Lord. When you give thanks to the Lord, that's an act of worship. He said, uh, sing unto him. When you sing and sing a psalm, the Bible says, sing a psalm unto him, that's an act of worship. When he says glory to his holy name, glory is an act of worship. Do you think worship, having said all that, do you think worship is a requirement when you're in the house of God? I'd say it's pretty important. David's whipping out his first message. We have his outline, and I'm stealing his outline right here. He said glory. He said seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Man, we have success when we seek God's face. Yes. I, I couldn't help but think, you know, uh, I saw it one time I lost, well, <laughs> yeah. one time mom said, we're going, Jim and I going shopping, you got the little man, you got Chase. I said, okay, no problem. And they left, and we was at a fall festival, and about 30, 40 minutes later, I ended up going home. And went home, and I was watching a ball game or something, and about 45 minutes to an hour later, Grandma called me and said, we're going to meet you and Chase at such and such a restaurant. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I hung up, and you want to talk about fear. Yeah. Fear. I think I got in my car and made it to that ballpark in five minutes and on a 15-minute journey. I went in there filled with fear. And running around, running around. Short enough, there he was, playing, having time of his life. But I knew I couldn't act like I left him. So when I saw him, I was talking to Stacy, who's a good friend of ours. And I just went on conversation. I was standing there talking to Stacy, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And about that time, Chase saw me and beelined me. And finally, when he comes up to me, before I had a chance to say anything, I said, are you ready to go? My feet are killing me. <laughs> He's like, yeah. He's like, where you been? I've been, I've been waiting on you. You ready to go? Okay, we're leaving. 
So then I go back to the house instead of the restaurant, and we play basketball. And I gave him basketball. We shot a few times, just maybe seven or eight shots. And I'm like, hey, why don't we go meet your mom, grandma? Yeah, we can sit in the car, we drive, we go to the restaurant. First thing out of grandma's mouth is, you have fun? He's like, yeah, me and dad play basketball. And I went, <laughs> he sought my face. You have no idea how I felt when he found me. I mean, I, I, I wanted to just burst out and cry, and I was praising Jesus. I couldn't believe you talk about being filled with fear. We're the fear of the Lord, but I mean, it's a righteous fear. It's a holy fear. It's a reverent fear. It's a fear that, that it lasts a lifetime. It is a respect for my Savior and Lord that's going to last me the rest of my days. And it's a respect that I hope my children have as they get older and say, I'm going to fear and respect the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, and instruction. But when I saw my son, I couldn't help but smile. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that he was still there. And yes, we lived in a country town, and we knew everybody, and everybody knows everybody, and he had the time of his life, and I got away with it. Got away with it, but I'm glad I got a Jesus, how we got a Savior, we've got a Lord, Amen. and he knows exactly where we are at all times. Amen. David is preaching a message. He says glory, and he turns around verse 14, he says, He is the Lord of God, his judgments are in all the earth. And then he said, Be mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. That's glory. He is getting glory. So we can see a pattern, even from verse 23, where he said, sing unto the Lord. That's worship. Show forth from day to day. That's show forth his salvation. That's his glory. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works in all the nations. For it is, it is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. That's worship. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. That's his glory. Glory and honor are his presence. Glory. Verse 28. Given to the Lord. Giving is worship. Given to the Lord. Kindreds of people. Given to the Lord. Glory and strength. What does David say in verse 29? Given to the Lord. Again, worship. Give what? Glory unto his name. Bring an offering. Worship. You know, tithing and offering is a form of worship. We need Amen. to tithe. We need to offer. And give those offerings. We need to, we need to worship. The Bible says, and come before him, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Now, do we believe what we're reading? Now, I mean, if we believe the Bible, first we have to agree. We either believe what we're reading, we don't. Obviously, David is preaching for the first time to his people, and he's trying to get his people on board. He's saying to worship, give God glory, fear the Lord, give him more glory, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, give God glory, give God glory. Do you realize 14 times he's talking about worship? Seven times he's talking about glory. Three times he's talking about fear. And two times he's talking about judgment. It's all there. It's a full message. And I like that three and two is five. And that's the number of grace. And that number of grace comes by way of peace. Comes by way of sanctification. And being cleansed by the blood of Christ. Giving God glory and worship in his holy son, Jesus Christ. Woo! Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. <laughs> then in 30 he says fear before him. Fear in all the earth, for the world also shall be stable, that it not be moved. Man, there's going to be a day when this world's going to be shaking and quaking and quickening and everything else. Judgment's coming. Judgment's coming to the house of God. It'll start with the house of God first. And then it'll end. Great white throne judgment with unredeemed mankind. Standing lost and naked and afraid and shame. Well, they will stand. Let the heavens be glad. And the heavens are glad. They're glad for every soul that's saved. They're glad for everybody that says, not my will, but thy will. I mean, they're having they rejoice when you see somebody in need and you say, I don't know, I don't feel like, no, I think I'm going to help them. Heavens rejoice. They rejoice when you say, I've got a mom or dad or parent or guardian, somebody that I care about, and it's been a while since I've called them. I think I'll call them. They rejoice. They rejoice when a father and son aren't getting together and the father parks his pride and says, I'm going to love my son no matter what he does. They rejoice. They rejoice when a husband has a wife and he's an idiot and he's hurt her feelings and he's done her wrong. When he parks his pride and says, I'm going to honor her as Christ honored the church. Amen. They rejoice. Amen. Oh, then shall the trees of the woods sing. I know a book that says the rocks will cry out. Men cease to praise. Amen. Hear the trees sing. Church, if you ain't going to worship him, the trees sure will. Amen. The Bible talks about the creation groaneth for the adoption to wit. What's that mean? That means the creation is groaning, moaning, praying. The creation, the trees, just waiting for the Lord to return. 
and move, remove that curse. Amen. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out of the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. Church, when people say the Lord's coming, he's coming. Amen. You know what that means in the Greek? He's coming. <laughs> Amen. Simple as that. The Lord is coming. He's coming to judge your earth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. I believe he's good. I believe he's great. I believe he's awesome. And really, he's better than all three. Do you have a better word? What comes better than awesome? Terrific? Fantastic? Don't you understand our English limited is so, our English language is so limited to awesome, what, awesome squared, awesome plus, awesome infinity, awesome, fantastic, terrific. What word do we got greater than awesomeness? But awesomeness does not compare to cover what my Lord and Savior is. Amen. Why? How do I, what word do I use? I'll tell you, I'm giving God glory. I'm giving Him worship. I'm giving Him praise for His strength, for His mercy and compassion. Amen. Amen. Oh, give unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Man, I don't know how I'm going to get that mercy when I'm in that glorified body, but I'm still going to get that mercy. You know why I know I'm going to get it mercy? You say, what do I need mercy for? I'm in a glorified body. I ain't pain, suffering. I won't even be sweating. I don't even, do you understand? Do you understand? You even work hard to breathe. You work hard to breathe. So you don't blame me. Look at somebody with a lung infection that can't breathe. It's so hard. I mean, the gravity gets heavy. We're going to a land that I don't need oxygen. Amen. Amen. I don't need air where I'm going. I got a glorified body powered and energized by the Holy Spirit and God's light. I don't need the sun, the physical sun shining on me to, to let things grow. We're going to be in a land in a place where it's just going to grow. Amen. Ain't going to be no scientist doing a breakdown on how, figuring out how it all works. It's just going to work. And if you try to use your little science, it'll never make sense. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, His mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God, of our salvation. That's worship. I like when He said, if you've been touched, come on up. Truthfully, I visualized running overnight after you get here. And I showed constraint, because I've been touched. Didn't you just want to thank you, Lord? I wanted to get up here, I've been touched. When God reviews our life, I didn't want to be the last one walking. Unless God put me in a situation where he's given me a bad back, bad knee, slow body. And he just saw me just to get it as good as I could get it. Or give me the patience to say, happy you. Oh, gather us together. <laughs> I know a book that says I'm going to be caught up together. Amen. Oh, that's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. One minute I'm going to look like this, and the next minute I'm going to look like this. <laughs> and deliver us from the heathen. You know what that means? Heathen means the enemy. Heathen means the unbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. Heathen believes in the father of lies. Whether they claim Satan or not, he's their father if they rejected Christ. And he says, deliver us from the heathen that we may give thanks unto the holy name and glory and, and praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen. Amen? Amen. And praise the Lord. That's how it closes out. Now, I don't know about you, but I hope when you leave here, you may not like my presentation or my loudness or the way how I present, but you better walk out of here and say, that was the greatest outline I've ever heard. <laughs> it came right out of the Bible, and it's David's outline, and David's going to have his own throne on the earth with Christ. Don't be dissing that man. <laughs> One day David would be joking up with you and say, come forth. Hey, Brother David, what's all this about your bad mouth in mind? Now I want to share this with you because I believe that's a great, great word that David gave. The day's going to come, and I'm not going to get too deep in this. This is more of a Wednesday night kind of thing. God sends two witnesses to the earth, witnesses of mankind during the Great Tribulation. God is trying to save. Now, I understand God can save who he can save, and he'll do what he's going to do, but God already knows their, their mind. It's whosoever will. Okay, so God understands, but God is continually trying to save, and they continually, willfully harden their hearts. And every time you reject the Holy Spirit, your heart gets harder, 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 until you're almost numb and indifferent. 
Two witnesses come. And I know there's people out there that say, we're going through the great tribulation. I had a friend of mine who was a preacher who said, we're going to go through the great tribulation. I don't really believe in the rapture. You know, it's not in there. The word rapture is not in there. And neither is Trinity, but we know there's three and they're one. And I'm not going to try to explain that, but we understand this. But I, but I always like the, the idea of these two men that God's going to bring back. Now, we think they're Moses and Elijah. I'm not going to argue with it. Some people say it's Enoch. I don't think so. Enoch didn't die. God says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this is judgment. I get that. I don't have a problem with that. So they say Enoch could be one of these because he hadn't died, and God's word is true. But I always say Enoch is a picture of the rapture, and that's why he ain't going to die. He was a picture for the rapture for the church. So I believe it's going to be Elijah. It's going to be the lawgiver, and, it, and it's going to be the, uh, the priest. So here we know one represents the law, one represents the prophets. And here we can see that these guys, they're going to be preaching. When they finish their testimony, this is in Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. It says, And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. So these two witnesses are going to witness. They're the last two human witnesses that is preaching to mankind. Now the Bible says in verse 8, their dead bodies, they're going to be taken. The enemy's going to make war against them, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. This is in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is called Sodom and Egypt, which shows Satan and his dominions are going to make Jerusalem, going to make Jerusalem the capital of homosexuality and worldliness. Because that's what Sodom and Egypt represent. So it says, And they the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. And in verse 10, it says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Now I don't know about you, friend, but if you think we're not going to be raptured, if you think we're going through the great tribulation, then you're in this group celebrating the death of Elijah and Moses. And I'm telling you, there ain't no chance that's going to happen. Amen. You're going to be talking about a guy when I find out Billy Graham dies. I'm just going to, if i got to honor all these presidents of different days, when Billy Graham dies, I think I'm calling in to work. Amen. Well, I'll be right here at work praying. Amen. You think, if I feel like that about Brother Billy Graham, surely I'm going to feel like that about Brother Moses. Amen. Amen. So here we understand these two prophets, they preach. Oh, do they preach. For 1,206 days, they're going to preach. And when God says they're finally done, He's going to allow Satan to kill them. Thus, finishing the prophet. Elijah wasn't a picture of the rapture, but he went up in a whirlwind. Chariots of fire, but he never died. God's word is true. He said it's appointed a man once to die. And after this is judgment, he, God's got to send him back so he can die so his word is true. Amen. Amen. But nevertheless, what does God do for humanity? Didn't I say David was preaching to the Jews? God is now sealing 144,000 Jews. Amen. Amen. He sends an angel. The last message humankind will ever hear comes from an angel. Amen. An angel is going to come. It's found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Now I want you to parallel this to David's message, to this angel's message. And this is important. Why do I know it's important? Because it's the last message that will ever be preached in the Word of God. After this, no more preaching by anybody. No more men coming back. This is the last message. And if angels are preaching it, I would guess it's important. Now, Amen. I think you need a lot of education to realize that. And what does the angel preach? This is what he preaches in two verses. He said, And I saw the priest to them that dwelt on the earth. And that wasn't just to the 144,000. But he's, these angels are going to get it done. They're going to preach. And you think they can, are they able to get it done? I know of an angel that stood on top of a mountain. I mean, if there's an angel that can stand, a fire angel stand on top of a mountain, I'm sure this angel can get it done. Amen. And he's going to preach a word. And what does he say? He's going to preach the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God. What did David say? Fear God. Not only did he say fear God and give glory. What did David say? Give glory. To him, for the hour of his judgment is coming. What did David say? Judgment. He judged, he's coming because he cometh to judge the earth. And he's come for what? Give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him 
that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of water. This angel preached David's message. Amen. Now, if that doesn't bear witness to what David was talking about, I don't know what does. Amen. I feel confident today that I got to say I preached the message of David's first and the angel's last. Amen. And I'm glad. So I want to encourage you to say, well, what are we going to do as a church body? What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. You want to be a successful church? It starts right here. Fear God. Church, let's fear God. Let's respect God. And if we respect God, we'll respect ourselves, respect our spouses, respect our children, respect your neighbor. Amen. Respect those strangers. Sing with a loud voice, fear God. What other, Pastor, what else? What other advice can you give me? Oh, here's a good one. Give glory. Have a lifestyle that gives, gives glory. Not just talking. Don't get caught giving somebody a frown because you look down. Mm. No, let's live a life of giving God glory. If you give God glory, you start worrying about a lot of things that hinder us sometimes. When we, when we get up excited and say, today I want to fear the Lord and I'm going to give God glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is coming. I recognize God's judgment is coming, but I'm so glad He's going to look at me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Well done, you mean you got to work? No, well done. What do you mean well done? What have I ever done? Well done, God accepted the blood of Christ. Yeah. I respect his sacrifice of giving sins on the cross of God. Oh, his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and sea and the fountains of water. Church, we need a heart that just worships. Amen. We need a heart that just worships and praises God. Amen. Let me tell you, if this whole world would just start praising God, if this whole world would just give God glory, Amen. give God credit, give God, uplift His holy name, things would change. If y'all would please stand. This was the third angel that kind of showed up and did a little something, something. He had a lot to say. He preached the everlasting gospel. We know the fall of Babylon was coming. Church, the tribulation is coming. Amen. Amen. And this angel, he showed up on the scene. Hard to believe how hard were these people that actually saw an angel preaching the word and still resisting it. I can't fathom the hardness of that kind of heart. They're so filled with hate and meanness. The world is going to be more corrupt than it's ever been at any time. That's right. Why? Simply because we're out of here. Amen. There's a lot, there's a lot of, oh Lord, if I go down there and it'll be 10, I won't destroy them if they're 10. Oh Lord, if it'll be 5. You know, he stopped. But if he just said, oh Lord, will you not destroy them? For one, peradventure. If you not destroy them, if there'll be one, you know what I believe? I was going to say this, so I can't preach it as a truth. I'm just telling you what I believe. I think if he'd have asked and said, Oh Lord, if there'd be one, I think God would have said, I'll save the one. Yeah. Boy, he saved me, and I was just the one. Amen. Amen. Church, he Amen. saved you. If you would have been the only one, That's right. he saved you. Because he's right. willing to give his son for just one, mm -hmm. let alone all mankind. Sister, go ahead. Mm -hmm.